Hello and welcome to Clonus for the Bank of Ireland Ulster football final. Derry, the red hot favourites today, in against a Cavan side who last took the Ulster title back in 1969. I can tell you for the past three years under Martin McHugh, they've been building for this very moment. They want an Ulster title. Well, Cavan, they have named this side for today's game. Philip Kermath, the only change from the team that hammered Donegal in the semi final. And of course, so much will depend on the midfield partnership of Dermot McCabe and Stephen King. As to Derry, well, they have retained the same side which beat Tyrone in the semi final. Kieran McKeever and Gary Coleman, two of the main linchpins in defence. And of course, so much depends on the likes of Anthony Toho and up front, Seamus Durney and Joe Brawley. Well, later in the programme, we'll hear from our two experts, Brian McAniff, our resident, and Paul Brewster, a man who played for Fermanagh, who were actually beaten by Cavan earlier in the championship. We'll be back to hear them shortly after the action, but let's now go to that action and join our commentary team of Jared Houlihan, but picking it up first as ever, Jimmy McGee. Cavan play in the 60th Ulster final. Derry play in the 14th, and Packin McEnany referees the third. First touch to Dermot McKay. Big Cavan midfielder lays off to Patrick Shields up for the interceptions made by Gary Coleman. He to Henry Darney. That was looking out towards Dermot Haney. Patrick Shields on it here for Cavan. Cavan not afraid, afraid to pass themselves out of defence. It's very much a Mark McHugh Donegal signature. and Carl chases in vain but it's a 45 for Cavan and the first scoring chance of the game with 45 seconds gone the hallmark of Cavan undoubtedly is the fact that they don't lose the patience when the ball is with their backs on the 45 meter line it's Ronan Carlin aiming towards Damien O'Reilly Gary Coleman, a bit untidy by the Derry defenders, and Henry Downey gets away from that with Damien O'Reilly. Neither side carried any baggage into this game, and the fact that there were no old scores to be settled from recent championship games, but uh, a little bit of a tangle right at the top. But it's okay, I think. And Ronan Carlin will have a better chance this time. Still, as you can see, wide on the left. But now about 30 metres out. No score in the game. Three minutes and a quarter have been played. But most of that has been held up for stoppages. Great score. Ronan Carlin is the scorer. And Kevin go in front. This is just really what the doctor ordered here. Great score by Ronan Carlin. He's the one that showed him the way the last day and has he started today. That'd be a great fill up for all Calvin fans. Carlin is starting at centre half forward. In fact, all the Calvin forwards are starting in the positions they were on the programme. This is Henry Downey. Out to Gary McGill for Derry. Derry looking for the out ball, back to McGill again. And this is a good little Derry move here. Trying to get Sean Martin Lockhart away. Now out to Big Anthony. Very good move, very methodical build up and typical total finish. Yes, this typifies Derry's play this year. Hold on to the ball until they get a man in space and a great score by Andy Tohill. Not often you get a midfield that can score as regularly as Anthony Toll. That's Toll's fifth point in this 1997 championship. Booted away from Dermot Heaney by Stephen King. Referee's judgment is that that was a foul by King. Certainly dangerous with the hand down on the ball, but it's not Stephen's style. And he probably thought he was going to make it just in time. But alas, it's hard to argue with Pat McEnany. His positioning is excellent. And now off the ball, a tangle between Jerry Sheridan and Joe Brawley. Sheridan is left in there to 
arrest the tantalising brolly, but that's not the way to do it, Jerry. That's just a concession of a free Anthony Toll territory and the chance for the Derry lead. Dermot McCabe standing almost on top of the kicker. We don't know we see it now. But Anthony Toll scored the first Derry point of the game. And I shall be most surprised if he doesn't score the second one. The big man from Swatra. Two points for Toll, two points for Derry, and they leave. But that started with Sheridan on Brawley. Yeah, simple score for Anthony. But I think Joe Brawley would be glad to see Jerry Sheridan holding his jersey. If he keeps that up, he'll be booked and he'll be in trouble very early days. Here's one of the best goalkeepers in the country, Paul O'Dowd. Comes off the fingers of big Stephen King. Gary Coleman here, starting at left half back. Back to challenge there with Peter Riley. Very good play by Riley. Terry Farley. Up the line to Larry Riley. Terrific play by Cavan. Johnny McBride's in pursuit. This Riley boy can shift, can't he? Oh, that's brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. Larry Riley with the pace of a Donovan Bailey. A terrific score there, Jimmy. Larry Riley caught Johnny McBride on the wrong side. Johnny McBride was never catching him. And a great score from a tight angle. So that all came out of nothing. Looked dead around him, centre of the field with a couple of passes and up the field, a good point. Here's Bernard Morris. Looks for an out. There isn't one. Tight marking by the Derry defenders. Stephen King. Stephen King to Ronan Carlin off his left foot. And again, easy picking for McCusker. Not the sort of ball that Carlin would want because it immediately launches a Derry attack. Gary McGill with Fit and Carl. Three here is Gary Coleman. Good interchanging up ahead of him to leave Cassidy free. Cassidy has scored well this season. Ah, oh, that's terrific. Joe Cassidy, the scorer, his 12th point of the championship. And a lovely piece of movement up front to allow Cassidy to come free. Good score. Yeah, terrific player. Joe Cassidy really has matured right through the championship. Wins the ball easy and takes a great point off his left foot. Derry on the move again. Great interception. Well read by Dermot McCabe. Nobody's spreading ahead of him. He's got to hold it. He's got no free man. He's got to go it alone. Oh, when you can do it as well as that, why not? Magnificent point by Dermot McCabe. And again, that was a breakdown in a Derry attack. Yes, Dermot gets on his strong left side. And from fully 40 metres out, strikes a lovely ball over the bar. I think Derby McCabe's going to be the future of Calvin football. Raymond Cunningham. Away from Lockhart. And the rest of the Calvin forwards run off the ball to give him the space. If he score, it is. It's a point. And with that, I must say I'm surprised. It just shows you how eyes can deceive you, Ger Hulham. I bet you wouldn't have said that was a point. I can't believe that's a point. It's a good yard wide on the right-hand side. Narrow angle from Raymond Cunningham, but definitely the ball was never over the bar. Johnny McBride beaten again by Larry Riley. And Larry is a thorn, there's no doubt about that. This 19-year-old from McBride, one of three brothers in the Cavan panel, a quarter of an hour has been played. Brian Mullins looking as all every inch the modern manager. Hat upstairs and ready for the holiday in Barbados. Kevin free kick to be taken by Peter Riley this time. Peter has scored a goal and ten points in this championship so far. Nothing today, but that is about to change. Peter Riley the scorer, and Cavan go two points in front. Derry's attack is started by Anthony Toll, broke down by Seamus Downey to Gary Coleman. He's held up illegally by Peter Riley, and a free for Derry. 
and that's in Anthony Toll territory. Halfway between the 20 meter and the 45 meter line. And Stephen King is down again. And he's not too happy with it. This looks to be. It looks a bit low, actually, Joe, for a hamstring. Yeah, but I think, I think the way he's looking at it, it's looking very, very much like a hamstring, probably down around the back of the knee. He doesn't look good. Meantime, the other number eight, Anthony Toll of Derry. That's it. That's over the lap. And it's Toll's third point of the game. And the Derry forwards have only scored one point so far in the game. Between Heaney and King, up goes Stephen. Couldn't hold on to it. And Derry relaunch with Dermot Dugan. They've got nine men coming forward now, Derry. This is Heaney. Outside him is McGill. To turn and hit it is the chance. That's a lovely score. That's really, really well taken by Gary McGill. But they were coming in force there one way and another. Yes, Gary. Yeah, he's all on his own, we took it from a narrow angle. But it's significant there, Dermot Heaney coming into attack and Stephen King not even be able to follow him back. I don't think Stephen will last the first half. Talking about Cavan alternatives, well, they could maybe put uh, Damien O'Reilly back there, or maybe Peter O'Reilly, who is good enough to play around a pivotal midfield role. Don't forget to have Mickey Graham on the subs. But they're in trouble, or rather Stephen King is. And friend or foe, I suppose there's nobody in the game in Ulster to deny Stephen King a medal. A good piece of play here by O'Neill. David O'Neill and Anthony Toll, and Anthony Toll to Gary Coleman. And here's the captain, the redoubtable Kieran McKeever. He's made of oak, playing it up to Joe Brawley, we have seen a little or nothing of Joe in the game. Terry Farley here for Cavan. Stephen King. How is he moving? Not badly. Fitton Cal. And Fitton Cal's got the better of O'Neill. He's in here. If he can turn on his left foot. Or even the outside of his right. Second chance for Cal. The block is made by the returning Mickey, the returning that is, from that aborted run of his only moments ago. Henry Downey, as so often in the past, launching a Derry attack. Level pegging in the match, five points apiece. Derry looking good here now, Lockhart, Fergal McCusker, and Derry take the lead. Fergal McCusker, the scorer, in a move with great design, a lot of players, many passes, well thought out team football. Yes, good move here by Derry. Gets it out to Fergal on his own, strokes it over the bar. But yet again, Calvin at the other end missed an easy score. Finn Cal has the post. Derry come down the field, score another point. So this is Raymond Cunningham for Calvin. Fergal McCusker unable to dispossess Bernard Morris. And it's Cunningham again from Kilmain and Wood. It's a good incisive run. It's with Ronan Carlin. And he's through the middle and had to be brought down. And maybe that will be a caution. Pat McEnany, right up Pat, of course, currently plays club football with Curdoff Gales and Monaghan. So he knows all the little ins and outs and idiosyncrasies of players. And it's got to be said that he's right up with the play. Jimmy, I think Henry Downey really should have been booked there. I mean, Ronan Carlin was getting through, he's left him for dead, and Henry's pulling down, he's glad to give away the point. I think he should have took his name. So Ronan Carlin has tapped over the free, as you could see. And it's level again, six points apiece. Peter Riley here. Didn't even look for his putting, but it's hard enough to play it with the way you're facing. Here's Gary Coleman. Gary McGill was unmarked outside him. 
But Coleman, just as he did in the semi-final, scores a point. He takes a bit of watching Gary Coleman. He really is an excellent player. Yeah, he'd be an ideal loose man. Once he gets himself free, there's no, no doubt. Even for a half-back, cornerback as he's supposed to be playing today, looks up, strokes it over the bar. Superb player. Peter Riley, as well as being a fastest tackler, really has got a defensive job to do, almost basketball style. That's the matchup, and he's got to go with Coleman. This is Bernard Morris, Terry Farrelly, Damien O'Reilly. Tackled by Dugan, then by Heaney, then the free kick to come. Good piece of play there by Damien O'Reilly, the old dog for the hard road. And a free kick for Peter Riley, I should imagine. Ronan Carlin takes the middle and left. Peter here takes them on the right. Left-footed player, of course. Derry leads seven points to six. 27 minutes gone, first half. Peter Riley, Calvin. Oh. Over the bar, and they're level again. Struck with great assurance by young Riley. Yeah, a great free kick here. Calvin are lucky to be endowed with two great free kick takers, both in the mold of Martin McHugh. Pat McEnany right up at the game. And very lot, little untoward passing him by. Good interception by Calvin, they did well then. And here goes Larry again. Kieran McKeever is the only one goal side of him. Riley has absolutely no support, he's got to go it alone. A marvellous point from Larry Riley. This 19 year old from Nuffride, his mother a Mayo woman. Yes. He had, oh, he had only McKeever ahead of him, and that's all he had to do, beat McKeever. Yeah, Keir McKeever did everything right. I think he was glad to see the ball get over the bar because he was totally isolated. It was a one-on-one -on -one situation, and the play certainly is working. Peter Riley, Larry's brother. Cavan had the back up behind him. This is Cunningham. Cunningham to Cal. Cal faced by O'Neill. And he's inside of the free out. Ball fouled by Fidget Cal. This, getting back to this Larry Riley, Riley ploy, it's a typical Martin McHugh to come up with something and get him isolated up front, Jer, and use him in that way. And it is working. Oh, it certainly is working, Jimmy. He's winning the ball. I think if we can just get Ronan Carter or somebody to come off his shoulder, there's definitely goals that, that be, to be scored there. Mick McGrath, the linesman on this side, Mick from Donegal. Gary McGill, sideline kick. Drops in the hands of Dermot Dugan. Nonchalant turn and a lovely point. A splendid game. We thought it would be close. And our thoughts were correct so far. Yes, I think it was the first high ball that Derry have kicked all the championship. Dermot Duggan, great catch and a beautiful score. I think Martin has done his homework in that the Derry full forward line haven't been getting easy ball. Distribution hasn't been as good as it was against Tyrone. This is Henry Downey. Not allowed to go over halfway today because his hands are full watching around him for the Cavan. Fast Cavan breaks. Anthony Toll. Oh, what a lovely delivery by Toll to McKeever. Out to Brawley. Jerry Sheridan with him. Brawley shows him side. Great work by Brawley. Yes. Joe Brawley has scored. The great thing about Brawley is you know where he's going. You know what he's going to do. But he's with that little jig of pace. You're powerless to do anything about it. Yes, you see here, Jay Sheridan's in perfect position. 
Crawley outpaced him, cuts in on his favourite left foot and slots over a great point. Crawley's first of the game, but the one to put Derry ahead. Two minutes to half time. Foul by Stephen King and Johnny McBride. Massive cabin support here in Clonus. He may be outnumbering Derry as much as three to one. And they're into everything, Cavan, looking for every opening. Shields ready from half back. King giving it back to Ronan Carlin. Ronan goes for it. And punches over the bar. Carlin, the scorer. 34 minutes gone. A lovely move. But Carlin started and finished. Yeah, it was a mistake early on. I think Henry Downey fumbled the ball. Ronan Carlin's right in here. I thought he would go for a goal, but possibly he's done the sensible thing, taking this point and leveled the game. At halftime, the teams go off in a very good Ulster final where the ball has been the priority. There's been a lot of very good movement. There have been no goals, but there have been 18 points equally distributed. The Gaily Gate with the star. At the top of the second half. This is Damien. What a great all-round player he is. Dermot McCabe. Raymond Cunningham releasing it early. Damien O'Reilly again got hit as he delivered. And it's wide. Damien O'Reilly has played fullback for Cavan. Well, I think he's played everywhere, just about everywhere. And always with a great deal of talent and know-how. Not a ticket to be had for this game. The third Ulster final meeting of these two counties. First in 1955. Cavan won it by three points then. And then in 1976, Derry won it by three points after a replay and extra time. Dermot McCabe here for Callum. Looking inside this work. Big Stephen. Well, would you believe it? Hard to believe there was a miss from there. This is Finn and Cal. It's not missed now. It's over the bar. And it's the lead for Cavan. And the scorer is Finton Cal. It should have been a point before it was, Ger. Ah, oh, certainly. Stephen had a great opportunity there at outfield with Johnny McBride. But it wasn't going back to Finton. This time he stayed cool and took his point. Good start for Calvin. Anyway, it's all settled up now. Here's Damien O'Reilly. Damien's fouled. 'Big run by Bernard Morris. Came right across your screen there, but Dermot Dugan went with him. We haven't seen Bernard make many of those. Today, he made several of them last day against Donegal. It was a long free for Ronan Carla. Outside, well outside the 45 meter line. Should he land this one, it'll be a real cracking score. Got the elevation. He's got the accuracy, and that's a magnificent point by Ronan Carlin. It's his one goal and 12 points he's now scored in the 1997 Championship. That was out of the top draw. Well, Jimmy, we've seen him scoring against the wind the last day. This is an almighty kick, well outside the 45 metre line, and beautifully stroked and then off the post. Ronan Carlin, what a great servant he's been to Cavan. One of the great players ever without getting the credit he often deserved. Dermot McCabe showing what he is and what he's going to be at midfield. Raymond Cunningham foraging out on the right. Good play, Cavan, more good play. McCabe licking up in here with Ronan Carlin. Little jab on the left foot, and it's over again. And Cavan are on song and in tune. Brilliant play by Dermot McCabe at the background of that score. McCabe is superb today. 
Yes, a terrific start here. Darren McCabe thought he was going to cut in his left. Common sense prevailed. Give it to Ronan Carlin and with his left foot over the bar. Cavan really are on top now. Cavan lead by three points. Half an hour to go. Playing out of the skins at the moment, Cavan. Incisive run here by Peter Riley. Where can he go? Foul by Gary McGill. Terrific run. You see, it might be running the air out of the lungs of Peter Riley, but it's giving a rest to a lot of his players. Yeah, I think he was running out of options there, Jimmy. He was running into a wall of day players and to give a needless free away. I think if they took their time, they certainly would have dispossessed Peter. But I think that's the secret today. Patrick. I think all the cab forwards want to take on the day defence. The kicker, number 11, Ronan Carlin, has got the last two points of the game. They've got Cavan three in front, and Cavan are not four in front. Believe it or not, he missed the, the easy one. Even though Cavan are on top, Jimmy, if they could rule those two misses, that's an easy one by Peter Riley and now one by Ronan. Certainly not to be expected. Johnny McBride and Peter Riley get themselves up. Johnny McBride with the pass. Ian McKeever, jersey pulled. Gary need the ball into that lethal full forward line. Kavanagh not giving them the odour of it inside. Seamus Danny. It's Brawley. The little jaunty went across. Fergal McCusker turns off the upright. Breaks down to Gary McGill. And it's over the bar. Now there's two points between them. McGill the scorer. Fergal McCusker. Gary Coleman. No marker. Where's the marking? Over the bar. Gary Coleman the scorer. Not for the first time in this game, the magnificent Coleman makes a break and nobody breaks with him. Yeah, Derry certainly playing with more urgency here. Gary Coleman in a common position, takes the point and Derry are right back in the game. Calvin could rue the misses. Thirteen minutes gone, second half. One point to Calvin lead, 12 to 11. Stephen King reaches for it, behind it's Johnny McBride. Gets it. To Lockhart, fouled by McCabe, McCabe descends, referee moves the ball 13 metres forward. There is just no value in descent. Here's Fergal McCusker. Joe Brawley. Sheridan is still gold side of him. He's fouled. Free into Derry and a caution for Jerry Sheridan. I think. Yeah, I think Joe's just adopting the Calvin tactics here. Run at Jerry Sheridan here. He pulls him. Joe Brawley with a chance to leave them deadlocked at 12 points apiece. Joe Brawley. Cavan come away again with Damien O'Reilly playing three midfielders. He to Stephen King. King to Kermit. That's for Larry Riley. And Larry obliges for the umpteen time in this game. Up to little Jason Riley. And Jason's foul, and it's a free in for Cavan. And the chance for them to win the lead. He's got pace. My goodness, Ger Hulan, for some pace up front now. Peter yeah. Riley, Larry Riley, Jason Riley. They're one of the quickest teams I've ever seen, Jimmy. But I think Jason Riley, to be fair, was very fortunate to get a free kick there. Certainly, if I had been in Pat McNeely's position, I wouldn't have given a free. What's the delay? Nothing very much except the waiting for Peter Riley to make it over to the ball, take the free. And uh, there he is appearing now. Peter Riley scored two points in the first half to bring his total for this 1997 championship to one goal and 12 points. It's a big, big return. The angle is not very favorable, except that he's a left-footed kicker. 
And this is the chance of the lead for Cavan. Peter Riley, the kicker. Over she goes. And the Cures men have gone back in front. Yes, a good angle for a left footed kicker. He strokes the ball so well, straight and through. Calvin badly needed that because they'd lost their way for a while. Maybe this will be an hour resurgence. Terrific match though. Anthony Toll and Dermot McKay playing pure football on each other all day. It shows you it can be hard and tough and fair without any underhand stuff. Oh. Gary McGill to Sean Martin Lockhart. Lockhart to Dugan. The layoff back to Lockhart again. Trying to turn it back on his favourite right foot. And the Cavan backs just won't let him turn. And he can't play the ball. And that's a free out to Cavan. The referee only allows you to hold on to it for long enough to take four paces in his estimation. Now it's Raymond Cunningham for Cavan. Fergal McCusker's the chasing player. He looks for support. He's got it now. Jason Riley coming back behind him diagonally. This is Ronan Carroll. Nobody free ahead. Goes for the big one. Over the bar, Ronan Carolan. Good fetch by Dermot Haney. McBride links up with Sean Martin Lockhart. Lockhart's gone in centre. McBride the carrier. Over the bar, Johnny McBride. Full back in the semi final. Scorer in the final. It doesn't seem to be anybody, Jimmy, who can't score in this dairy team. Doesn't matter where you're corner back, goalkeeper, whatever, you can still score points at vital stages. Good score by Johnny McBride. Henry Downey launching another dirty attack, and here's Anthony Toll. What an impressive, imposing sight as he carries it forward. And it's over the bar. A great score by Toll, and it's in Kendrick's Park in Clonus. They are level again. Super score by Toll. Yeah, he comes on a terrific pace under pressure. Still manages to take his point. This game is really to and fro in. We wouldn't like to call a winner even at this stage. This is very, one of the very best of Ulster finals. Heaney goes for it, can't hold on to it. Here's a man who's playing absolutely storming game. Gary Coleman, for once, he miscues. Bernard Morris, Dermot Dugan, the two players. Dermot McKay, magnificent at midfield. And with Toll. And they're not Toll doesn't throw a punch when he can't get the ball. He accepts it. McCabe dropping it in for Cavan. And Jamie McCusco wisely lets it go as Jason Riley and Stephen King were threatening there for Cavan. Anthony Toll back to Sean Martin Locker. Dermot McCabe, the nearest Cavan player. Now Downey. Downey to his brother Seamus. Henry to Seamus. Here comes McCabe. The sides are locked at 14 points apiece. Kieran McKeever loosen, loosens it up to Brawley. Brawley thinks about laying off, show, sells a dummy, gets it back into Dugan. Dugan inside to McKeever, and the captain puts it over the bar. You can't do more than that as a captain. What a great player he is at that. The Dungiven skipper, Kieran McKeever. Inspirational score, surely, for Derry. Certainly great leadership by Kieran McKeever. But good vision there by Dermot Dugan. And less easy point. Philip Smith is coming into the cabin team. And the captain, Stephen King, has gone off. A valiant effort by Stephen. But he just can't smash it today. Derry. A point to the good. Tack again. Over to Henry Downey. Seems to be restored to centre half back. 
loosening it out to Fergal McCusker. O'Dowd. And now Cavan can build from there. Philip Smith just in for Stephen King. Up to Peter Riley. Peter goes looking for his brother inside. It's Damien O'Reilly. Damien O'Reilly gets it over to Jason Riley. Jason Riley. Just when you thought Cav was out of it, Peter Riley, a low ball. The hop suits Damien Riley. He shows his strength here. Beats Johnny McBride, looks around, Jason Riley slips it onto the keeper. Terrific score. They have only seven minutes to go. Anthony Toll, oh, it's a great ball by Toll. McKeever read it so well. A terrific play. And away goes Gary McGill, bearing down, kicking up goal, and Toller down. Maybe the best shot saver in the country. I haven't seen a better shot saver this season, Jerry. No, he certainly had a couple of terrific saves earlier on in the campaign. Guy McGill, goal for goals. And I think it's time enough for him to take his points. He's only two behind. And again, a build-up come from the goalkeeper. I think Cavan had to be careful. Kieran McKeever's making breaks at every opportunity. Carol Diamond, you've got a flash of running around the sideline there for Derry. Now Anthony Toll to try and reduce the margin to a single point. Toll from 45. Gets a bit of a draw on it and McCabe pulls it down and is fouled in the process. Dermot McCabe, only 21 years old, this 14 year old. 14 stone, 6 foot 2 student. I think currently he's an outstanding player, but in the future I think he's going to be one of the greats. Derry, that two points behind, trying to develop something here. Seamus Downey back, augmenting the midfield. But it's a cabin ball. The man of the match here in a great Ulster final is this boy, Dermot McCabe. I'm not surprised. He thoroughly deserves it. That's Brian McAniff's man of the match. Great player. And certainly a great one for the future, Chair. For definite. I think, I think he's one of the best midfielders around. And probably will be around for the next five or ten years. Very make the substitution. Carl Diamonds come in. This time it's Jason Riley. And Jason's fouled. And Jason's an elusive Pimpernel. What a sub to have to bring in. What a game this man's had to Damien O'Reilly. And Peter Riley with the cabin free kick. This would put a goal between them. It's by no means easy. That angle on the 13 meter line. Wide. Wide. They are five seconds and two points away from the Anglo Celt Cup. Jason Riley. Anthony Toll here for Derry. And absorbing there. Carl Diamond. Big Dermot Heaney. Bearing down on Cavan. Brought down by Bernard Morris. Free kick into Derry. The match is an injury time. 
Well, Derry played the clock and played the percentages. Martin McHugh checks his watch. Even for those neutrals, it's a game that is tantalising. Look at it. A mixture of nail biting and prayer. The point's been taken. Breaking on the loose here to Carl Diamond. Very important punch by Terry Farley. And Patrick Shields has it for Cavan. Patrick Shields knocks it out here to Philip Carrot and Cavan. Other Ulster champions. Cavan have won the Ulster Championship for the 39th time. The final score, 114 to 16 points. The game is over, but the talk will go on forever. Go on, go on. Stephen Montgomery. And Stephen King accepts the trophy for himself, for Kevin, and for football. The Anglo-Shay Cup is going home. A bunch of lads, 28 fellas, that have died for the cause to get the cup back to Cavan. You know, you have to give them full credit. Like, to put in huge sacrifices. And Martin McHugh has done a terrific job. And his efforts, like, have definitely, you know, they've definitely brought the cup back, nobody else. Martin, I remember in an interview before you said to me, these are the best supporters in the country. I think they've proved that today. Yeah, no question about that, There's Great support today in the last day against Donegal. I've seen young people and old people crying there today. And that just shows you what it means to Cavan. Was it, a, was it 70 minutes where your game plan worked? You, you seemed to want to isolate one or two of the corner forwards and get quick ball into them. Well, we, we felt that we had won a lot of areas, especially around the middle field, we won it. And uh, uh, the first half, we had a lot of missed chances, which we were worried about. But the game over the 70 minutes, we knew there was the training we had done, if it was tight at the end, that we had won it. And we felt that when we got the goal, that we'd done well to dig deep after that. Obviously, we were very disappointed. We knew that uh, Cavan were going to be very fit and... Uh, uh, you know, be prepared to, to bring the game uh, to us if they got the chance and we had hoped to bring the game more to them. Well, it's very hard after you've put in so much work all through the year and then to come out and to be beaten to go this far. And I guess it's never nice to be beaten in a final. And I suppose if anybody had to be beaten by it, it had to be Calvin after waiting 29 years, I suppose they deserve it. Were you impressed or even surprised by their level of fitness? They were very, very quick over the first yard or two, weren't they? They were, but in fairness to us as well, we knew we had the work done as well, and we knew we were fit enough, but I don't know, they seemed to adapt better to the conditions and they seemed to get the ball into their front line quicker, which is a, a problem we seemed to have. You know, we couldn't get the ball into Joe and Seamus and Joe Cassidy quick enough. Although we seemed to be able to pick off the scores well enough in the first half, it just dried up a little bit in the second half. We have a very speedy full, uh, full forward line, and they work well together and create the space for each other. They're, they're very unselfish in that... They don't just run for the ball, they run off the ball to make the space for the other forward. It doesn't matter who scores as long as we get the scores, you know. We're back training tomorrow at one o'clock in Cavan in Breffney Park. They're back training tomorrow at one o'clock. I told them that on Friday night. That's how confident I was we're going to win and then we'll go for a better lunch. But we're going to get this out of our legs. It's very important after a game like that that you get back out tomorrow and run it. So we'll go out a bit earlier and we'll go for a better lunch afterwards. But yeah, we're, we're looking. I mean, the, the lads said there they wanted to get to Crow Park in. I mean, we're not going up to make up numbers. You always look like a player who enjoyed playing. Did you enjoy managing that team today? Not really, no. The only time I enjoyed today was when the final horse went. went. I think it was a great match. And I heard people saying out there was the best Ulster final in years. And that's great. Two good football teams playing football. And that's what football's about. It's great for kids there watching that the other day. No fisty cuffs, no nothing. Unfortunately, only one team can come out of Ulster and one team can go on to win the All-Ireland. And this year, it's not going to be there. You're going to take time to think about your own, your own future? Oh, yeah. I am, yeah. yeah. Take a well-deserved rest now and relax and uh, cogitate, as they say. The views there from the dressing room. Brian McAniff, it was the best game of the Ulster Championship and the best team won. No doubt about that, Adrian. In fact, the best Ulster final for several years and uh, Cavan more than deserved their victory out there. Did their homework done on Derry. Derry came in as roaring half favours, tipped by myself. I have to eat my cap here tonight. But uh, Cavan from the very 
start to finish, except for a brief period, maybe of 10 minutes in the second half, carry the game to Derry. To close down Derry's options of exploiting the full forward line, uh, the full back line, which I mentioned at the start, maybe might be their Achilles heel, was of a great strength and depth. Uh, they lost their captain, Stephen King, an inspiration figure, figure and had to take off Fitton Cahill, and because of the strength of the panel, uh, they brought in Jason Riley, who scored the all-important goal. Paul Brewster, you always had a wee sneaking suspicion for Kevin today because you know how good they are. Whenever they get the ball, they run at your defence. They did exactly that against Derry today, put their half-back line on the back foot, and perhaps that was the springboard for success. Yes, having played against Kevin in the earlier rounds and then losing to them, um, I felt Kevin would go on and could possibly come out as also champions, and today they, they came good. Now, the result won't be without controversy, the point that never was. It really wasn't a point, you know what I mean? But to be fair to Derry, even in all their aftermatch uh, chat, no one really has made an issue out of that at all. Yeah, definitely. From, from the angle here in the commentary box, um, it was a good half-yard wide. But the umpires were under the posts, and the Derry players didn't seem to complain that vigorously at the time. Now, Brian, whenever you look at the last closing seconds, uh, you felt that perhaps that Seamus Derry was fouled, but the referee, whenever you look at it, seemed to play the advantage, and perhaps that was an opportunity there for Derry that went to bed. Yeah, he, he was apt all day, to be fair, to referee uh, McEnany to, to let the play run, and, and the opportunity was there, and I think it was Gary Coleman was inside, maybe Seamus, it would have been better to part the ball, because Gary had already boxed quite a good point. But it wouldn't have been just to be fair about Adrian, you know, uh, all, all over the 70 minutes cavern, uh, chased Derry really literally out of the park and I suppose that was reflected by the team manager, manager uh, Brian Mullins' re uh, reaction at the end of the match. He had no, nothing to say but ex uh, except that he knew that coming into the game the Cavan were going to be a very fit side and as McHugh mentioned even in his sum summary of the game he knew that if it got to the last 10 minutes they were going to win the match. Well, whenever we take a look at it, I don't think I've ever seen a game with so many fisted points whenever the players on the rare occasions get inside the defences. Whenever Calvin did get inside with Jason Wright in the last 10 minutes, he took his opportunity, took his goal well, a very decisive moment in the game. Yes, it was the first time that a forward actually elected to shoot for goal instead of fisting the point. And uh, it, it ended up the turning point in the game because from that Calvin went on and managed to hold on at the end. Do you think that this Calvin side would have won by more, Brian, if they weren't so listed? I'm not saying nervous, but you know, the weight of expectation on their shoulders because everybody was praying that they would win for the first time since 1969. Well, they're playing the Derry side that I suppose had 10 of an All Ireland winning side, won two national leagues, and had a wealth of experience, won an All under Ulster and an All Ireland under 21 championship. So they're relatively new, and it's great credit to them. I suppose they lacked maybe uh, a wee bit of confidence going into the match, although that wasn't reflected throughout. but. Uh, by and large, they're going to build on that cavern, and they're so superbly fit. I think they're going to make great representatives in Croke Park. Paul, you played in midfield all your life. You played against Stephen King, and I know it's sore, obviously, to be here for Manaman to see the team that beats you, and perhaps a little bit luckier in, earlier in the championship. But uh, you would not begrudge Stephen King any moment of glory after such a long, long career. No, definitely not. I mean, we were disappointed to lose the cavern, and I'm sure a lot of the Fermanagh players this evening will be disappointed that Calvin went on to win, but delighted at the same time for Calvin. Um, they've shown that it is possible to come as a new team on the block and go and take on your Derrys and the Thrones of this world and come out as also championships. And there is hope then for the likes of ourselves and Armagh to come good in the next few years and hopefully take the anglo Celt home to Fermanagh or Armagh. Darren McCabe was superb. Your man of the match an outstanding game. And uh, to think that he lost his, his father figure, uh, Stephen King, so early in the game, he sold it terribly well against two massively big Derry men, and, and uh, not only did he fetch a lot of ball and score, but he also defended terribly well. I think that was a, 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 one of the stronger parts of this game, actually, just before we picked him as man of the match, we were waiting, and there was a very important free kick for Derry, and the man that fetched in the square was Dermot McCabe. I thought it was simply superb, but Cavan had a lot of good players out there today. There were, there were six bags were superb. Uh, and uh, their inside forwards were simply magnificent, and their three half forwards defended, and that was something maybe there wasn't enough taken out of out there today. They defended terribly well. They didn't give Derry the chance to hit their inside forwards. In fact, an interesting statistic, Adrian, would be that the two Derry cornerbacks scored more from, or as much from play as the two Derry corner forwards. You know, so that said a lot for the Calvin defensive qualities. Paul, briefly too, uh, what about uh, Calvin and the All Ireland? In the All-Ireland Series, will they do well as the Ulster champions? Yes, Martin has prepared them to not only win Ulster, but to go down to Croke Park and give it a good go down there as well. Um, they've carried in the semi-final, who will be a lot of people's favourites to go on and win the All-Ireland. But I see no reason why that Cavan team can't improve between now and All-Ireland semi-final date. And you never know, we could be playing not only the Ulster Championships next year in the first round, but also the All-Ireland Champions. Yeah, you never know. Uh, that's enough from the experts at the moment. We'll be back in a few minutes' time from Action, from Leinster, from Munster, and of course, from a very exciting...